stories from the halcyon days. I'm not talking about the drug now for you people in the gutter. The halcyon day, the glory days of Vince, when he was on top of the world, when he had a, a commanding presence, a stentorian tone to his voice. As a matter of fact, somebody praised me the other day for smartening them up to the word stentorian. It's something they're going to use now in everyday language and everyday conversation. But so it's the, the plethora of Vince McMahon stories that are out there. Indeed, that is correct. From the very beginning, when he was intimidate, intimidating, when he was impersonating Howard Cosell, he tried to intimidate <laughs> Howard Cosell. Remember, he tried to get him, if you ever read Howard Cosell's book, it was like, Vince McMahon called me and he wanted me to come to the WWF and I yeah. told him no and he was like, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> and he did, remember, he did the same thing with Mike Goldberg. That's with right. Goldberg and Rogan, before everybody knew Rogan was a lunatic and, and Mike Goldberg was the play-by-play -play voice of the UFC, he suddenly got a wild hair up his ass, as we've mentioned about Vince. When he wakes up with an idea, the, the world is not safe, and he was trying to get Mike Goldberg not only to come and be the voice of Raw, but to no-show Dana White on some big event that they were, they were on the, the doorstep of presenting over in the UFC, wasn't it? I believe so. It was definitely to screw over the UFC. That was the main intent yeah. behind it. Sure. And so that's sometimes Vince just wakes up with the idea, either I'll fuck that guy like he may have done with Vern Gagne, or I don't know why he was sideways with Dana White, or just with Howard Coast. Well, we've got to have the best. It, he considers the best person in, in whatever field of endeavor the most famous one, the, the name, the recognition factor, the, you know, so with uh, Howard Cosell, I guess now people wouldn't, probably most people never even saw fucking Howard Cosell, but at one point in time, he was the most famous sports announcer and crossed over into probably the most famous television announcer in the United States, at least for a few years. And so he had to have him until he said, go, go fuck yourself. Makes you wonder what he thought at WrestleMania 2. Celebrity was such a big deal for him. WrestleMania 1, Mr. T at the height of his powers. You have Cindy Lauper at the height of her powers. Billy Martin, when the Yankee fans were really clamoring for more Billy Martin. Liberace. I guess in his own world, he was still a big deal. I don't, I don't know who the big Liberace fans are. Of everybody's grandmother. And in, 80, and in 85, grandmothers still liked wrestling. WrestleMania 2, you have elusive Burger Man Herb. <laughs> <laughs> like the the celebrity list just went way downhill I about that but you know what it, to, to defend herb that commercial was everywhere you couldn't fucking get away from it everybody knew who herb was now to did anybody want to see any more of herb did anybody want to <laughs> see Herb on a wrestling program did no. anybody want to see herb on a fucking three hour tour cruise and get lost at sea, yes. But, but so they knew who he was. He was the most famous fast food franchise mascot no. in the world at that point in time. Remember, they also had, what's her name from Wendy's? Where's the beef? Cl Clara Peller. They had her, but they couldn't say anything about Wendy's because they would get sued. So they're like, what'd they call her? Like, famous burger woman. Famous beef lady. <laughs> <laughs> she was the original meat gentlewoman. All uh, right. But well, but a, anyway, a look at the celebrities uh, throughout the years in WWE. Bob Euchre was the unexpected great. He got it. He embraced it. He brought some gravitas to it in his own weird way. Yeah. Bob Euchre was one of the best. WrestleMania 3 and WrestleMania 4. He did. He did get it. And the famous shot of Andre with his hands around his neck. That was classic. Um, but then remember, though. At one point, they they could start getting away without having celebrities at WrestleMania. I think Vince was always frustrated because they didn't have any celebrities. But for a while, they'd get away with it because the product was so hot. And then they went back to celebrity. And then they had a celebrity on fucking Raw every Monday night for a while there. So it just became so overused, it wasn't even a, a attraction or even something to talk about anymore and but. eventually they just threw random like any celebrity they can get i was at wrestlemania 10 i had a great time great matches on that show i was happy to see brett win the title i was surprised all the sheets were basically saying it's gonna be luger 
Yeah. I was so happy. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, why is Donnie Wahlberg and Nicholas Turturro and who's that? Like just Ra- Burt Reynolds is there because he was down on his luck and a wrestling fan. You had the double thing going there. You had two things to get Burt Reynolds. He was down on his luck and a wrestling fan, but it was just some random celebrity. Anyone they can get, they would throw on there. Tiny Tim, where's he? Let's get him on there. Was uh, with Pamela Anderson, the one she, was that a WrestleMania or was that? That was a Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble and the WrestleMania. Roy Rumble and Red. Well, at one of them, I saw her standing, you know, backstage at the, she wandered by the monitor and started watching for a minute. Otherwise she was in a room somewhere. Um, she looked exactly like you would expect Pamela Anderson to look, but she looked also in her eyes, like she was just floating. Like she was like, what are my surroundings here? I have no idea what's going on in my Oh, come on. That, environment. Was, that wasn't a unique thing in that locker room in 1996. Let's be honest. I don't know. Most of the other guys looked like they could find their way back to the shitter if they had to, but she was, but anyway, nevertheless. All right, you're so, a big celebrity in your own right. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, you're the you're I, the I'm just friends the with a big celebrity. Vanguard network. I'm just friends with a big celebrity. I'm a I'm a little nothing over here. Well, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little nothing. Short <laughs> Here is my handle. Here is 